welcome to Narrowboat Precious Jet. Um, today is Monday the 6th of August. No, it's not. It's Monday the 6th of September. Okay, um, everyone's been telling me with the cooker I need to turn it 90 degrees. Uh, and my pig headed head has refused to listen. Um, mainly because. Uh, I do have a massive OCD issue that I, when I get into my mind that things have to look a certain way. So I'm just trying to get something in my pocket. When I get something in my mind that, that things have to look a certain way, um, the OCD in my head takes over and I become pig ignorant and tend not to listen to people. Um, and you guys know, you guys, you all know, you all know, um, a lot of you understand. Um, the way I am because nobody likes to admit they're wrong sorry nobody likes to admit they're wrong and nobody likes to be told they're wrong either um, I have listened to you guys and I understand um, and you're right it does need to be 90 degrees um, and slowly and uh, slowly and slowly my head is coming round to that fact it's gonna take a it's gonna take a while for me to understand it and try and get it figured out in my head but you guys are absolutely right it needs to be turned to 90 degrees so that's exactly what's gonna happen um, it's taken me about a week to get it through my thick skull um, but it will be turned to 90 degrees so as you can all see I'm at Bronson um, I've come here uh, Midland Chandlers to buy couple of pieces just what I was trying to get out of my pocket so these are to connect my uh, hob and my oven to uh, the gas pipes so they're just like little adapters sorry uh, boats are coming around look so these are little adapters to connect the pipes to the uh, to the hob and the oven so um, this week's gonna be uh, a strange video uh, mainly in the fact that I'm going to try and build the um, carcass to fit the oven in um, and at some point I'm going to take the work surface back off um, trim the end of the wood off so the end bit that I've cut the hole out for the hob I'm going to trim that off um, there's a, a chap who regular um, regular comments on my videos S S V journeyman and uh, he said to get a domino um, joiner so that's I'm going to have a look for that now I'm going to go down to the local DIY place and look at dom domino joiners and all I'll do is I'll cut the end bit off I've got plenty of heart, um, work surface I've got spare so I'll just add a piece on just join it with a bit of a domino joiner uh, glue it clamp it and uh, leave it for a couple of days to set and then cut the hole in it and mount the mount the hob the way it should be mounted so thanks to you guys who have commented um, like I said it's taken me a while to get it through my, my thick skull but um, you guys know and I do listen to you and I do really appreciate your comments so uh, keep them coming guys keep them coming okay let's jump into the video and uh, see how far we get this week and see what we get up to this week all right so uh, as always don't forget to like the video if you enjoy it if you don't enjoy it give me a thumbs down I don't mind either way um, also um, love your comments as always so keep commenting and if you're not already then please consider subscribing so and um, if you feel you need to share the videos okay guys um, like I said on the last video there's no adverts at the moment so um, enjoy the ad free it's good it's all good I, I hate adverts myself but you know I understand why they're there but uh, I do dislike adverts so there you go okay chat to you soon uh, some of you guys are probably gonna laugh now because my well you know my woodworking skills I'm awful route a bit for a biscuit joint biscuits and glue okay and I've also got a hinge repair kit for, uh, for mummy's house so that'll be my job later on today is going around my mum's and sorting that out right back at the boat today um wednesday the 8th of september didn't manage to get here yesterday um needed to catch up with sleep yesterday and i'm absolutely knackered today as well so um anyway um it's lovely and warm outside today rather too warm actually and i stepped inside the boat and it's lovely and cool and i've opened the windows now the hatchways and that to let a bit of light in all the cool air is leaving the boat and all the hot air is coming in um, so we're going to trim this try and trim the work surface off today uh, and measure up a bit of the offcut which I've got over there got plenty of offcut that's one thing I've got plenty of is offcut 
um, trim that up, make it the same size. Um, can't do any more for the oven box just yet, or the oven carcass. Um, um, the boards, these grey boards I use, these ones on the side here. Um, they don't sell them off the shelf in, in B&Q, you have to order them in. So I've ordered a couple of boards and they don't get, they won't get here till Saturday, so um, that's on hold. That job's on hold. So we're going to do this. So you guys stand by, and then we'll get the we'll get the uh, worktop off, get the 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 A frames off the top of the boat, get them down here, and uh, we'll trim the end of that off. Um, uh, trim the end of the off cut as well that's behind there. And then what we'll do is we'll, um, <clears throat> when we glue it back together, we'll lay it on top of this one and that will make it nice and flat. Um, uh, we'll try and clamp a couple of things to it as well, make it nice and flat and put a bit of plastic either side, stop any glue escaping and sticking to it. The plastic, will, the plastic will just come off. I'll just use something like bubble wrap or something because um, the plastic will just come off with a, with a, with a plane or something or with a, with a bit of sandpaper. You know, as long as the work top's nice and flat, that's all that matters. Right, just before we get going, um, a little tip for you. Never do this for your tape measure, okay? Because <clears throat> all tape measures at the end here have a bit of movement. And that movement there is done on purpose. Because that movement of that there is the exact same as the gap. That toe there, look, it's the exact same. So if you're pushing against something or pulling against something, that movement there gives you the same measurement each time okay and if you keep doing this for your tape measure you're going to be elongating them holes in the end there in these holes here in the tape and that movement will get more and more and more and eventually you'll be a millimeter or two out from that from pull it to push it you'll be a millimeter out or even more in some cases so look after your tape measures. Right, so where were we? <coughs> okay, so we've, um, we've put a bearer across here now, just as a guide to cut. Um, we've measured from both ends and we've got it as accurate as we can. Okay, so however much I cut off here now is the same as what I'm gonna cut off the other board in a minute, the, uh, the spare work surface. And that's what will get added on in the end at some point. So um, we should be okay. Just got to make sure we follow the guide all the way down and we don't lose any any space we don't jiggle around or anything to make sure it's just nice and smooth all the way across sitting dead on the line i've drawn and the shoulder of the saw against the side of this okay so as long as the measurements all the way down are exactly the same which they should be a quick measure of that in the middle 88.2 millimeters yep my ipod my eyesight's very poor but yeah, that's good. So that's all all the way across, that's exactly the same. That end of the board there is square because I didn't cut that. So you know that end is manufactured square. So as I've measured from the square edge, <clears throat> 88.2 all the way across, that'll give me a nice clean cut. <coughs> oh, got a right cough today. Okay, let's see how far we get on. Got a bit carried away and did it without showing you. Uh, so all I've done is I've routed a gap all the way along there, look, all the way through. And same on this side, look, it's a router. In fact, you can see it better this side. A routed gap all the way through. Uh, what I'll do now is, uh, where's the biscuits? I'll fill the gap full of glue 
and I will biscuit all the way across. So I'll put these biscuits in like this, fill it full of glue, put lots of glue, lots of biscuits all the way across. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll shove it together without the plastic lifting, which is gonna be a bit of an awkward bit, but we'll do it. And then line it up. And then I've got a clamp that just reaches across the side to keep it square that way. And then I've got ratchet straps. That, I've got a ratchet strap to go all the way around it and that'll pull it up nice and tight. Um, that's about all I can do really. And then any gap that's left at the end, I'll have to fill with uh, filler and sand it. Um, some sand, some uh, dust off the floor. Look, I'll get some glue and I'll fill it with dust off the floor. So all that dust down there, I'll put, mix it with a bit of glue and I'll fill that and that'll fill the hole and you'll hardly see it then. But you're always going to see a line across, unfortunately. But we'll see what it looks like once it's on the, once it's on the surface. So this is the back edge, by the way. This is a bit rougher anyway. Um, because you get the rip out of the saw and stuff. That's that's. I made sure the rip out was on the back edge. Um, I don't know whether I showed you guys that. So anyway, let's uh, let's add a bit of glue, clamp it, strap it, and see how we get on. So I'm gonna add a couple of clamps to this, uh, just to hold it down and keep it steady while it's uh, while it's going off. Um, I've got a bit of weight on here, just stop it falling off at the moment because uh, I've got a great flat surface. I didn't want to use that worktop over there, which would have been ideal, but I don't want to get glue on and damage it, so I'm not using that. I've got a board under here. It was me cutting board that I used for me, uh, me temporary worktop. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see how we get on. So uh, watch, enjoy, laugh, all of the above probably. Okay, here we go. Okay, glued and clamped. This is just on top now to um, to give me something to clamp against to hold up to put a, put a bit of pressure down onto the wood to squeeze it flat. Um, I've got a clamp going long ways to hold the boards together, um, so they're squashed together and, and the edges are nice and close. Hopefully, I've got a strap pulling it all the way round and squeezing it in like that that way long ways. Got clamps holding the boards down either side so hopefully um, we should be fairly um, square um, although I'm not holding my breath massively because um, yeah I'm not a great woodworker I've never been massively brilliant at working with wood um, just hoping now that the clamps I've got is sufficient to uh, to hold it. I'm just trying to find some more clamps. Um, and I hope I've done a half decent job. Uh, but the thing is, if if all fails, um, if it works fine, that's great. It's not an issue. If it works, it's brilliant. Um, it will just uh, have a line across it where I've joined it, that's all. If it doesn't work, well, I just have to buy a new worktop, won't I? You know what I mean? It's, it's, not, a, it's not a biggie. Um, it's only money, as they say. And it's easy come, easy go, isn't it? You know, so. But it's got two chances, and there's nothing else I can do now until that glue is dried. So, home time. Just as the day is starting to really heat up as well, which is nice because I'm starting to sweat in the boat here. It's becoming a bit like a hot tube. So, okay, guys, um, leaving the boat in the mess again. Look at all the crap on the floor. Oh, I hope this works. Um, and then, obviously, there's going to be a bit of a gap there, I think. And if there is, I'll I'll um, I'll save some of this sawdust down here, and I'll mix it with wood glue, and I'll stick it in, let it set stick it in the crack with the, with the sawdust and the wood glue and the sawdust mixed together will be it won't be invisible don't get me wrong but it'll hide it a little bit you know okay that's it for now see you tomorrow okay back at the boat and today is thursday the 9th of september and uh let's uh let's un unpack this and see what uh what the joints are like. The glue should have had a chance to set by now. 
um, I'm not a woodworker you all know that um, but let's see let's see how bad it looks so let's just set you up on the tripod a second and then uh, we'll start taking off the ratchet straps and the clamps and we will have a look see what it looks like so right hold there hot fire hold fire That's my text alert, you have to excuse that. My phone's on the counter. So while I'm standing there chatting to you, um, a couple of you noticed um, my ringtone is um, bagpipes. And the tune it plays is a tune called Flowers of the Forest. And it's... Um, it's kind of like the Scottish version or the bagpipe version of the last post. Uh, that's my ringtone. And then uh, my text alert is what you've just heard. heard. Uh, my text alert is the last post. Um, and it goes back about the story. The back story is, the, the reason why I've got that as my text alert is it goes back uh, about five or six years. And uh, I did a visit to Eeps in Belgium went to visit Menin Gate um, and if you've ever been around Eeps area or that sort of area in Belgium anywhere at the front of the First World War basically um, there is graveyard upon graveyard upon graveyard upon graveyard of um, Commonwealth soldiers that have died and buried um, they weren't the only ones to die and die there and be buried there. The Germans were also died and buried there, but they were because they were the losers. They weren't allowed um, gravestones. So anyway, I was massively humbled by the said graveyards and all the graves and the amount of names upon names upon names of soldiers that are still missing. Um, can you imagine that in this day of age, soldiers missing in battle. To the extent that there's monuments all over Europe. As soon as that finishes, we'll carry on chatting. So back to the story, um, you imagine that this day and age of hundreds of thousands of soldiers missing, uh, missing in action uh, and not knowing where they are. Um, so I, I was massively humbled by my visit to Eeps and Belgium and that sort of area. Um, so much so that ever since my ring, my uh, text alert, yeah, don't, phones don't get used as phones these days, but my text alert was used as um, the last post so right let's, uh, let's have a look well I can't say it looks very pretty and there's a big gap one end um, fortunately the big gap is at the back so you, can't, you won't see the big gap because that'll be hidden under the under the gunnels that will be space to lay this down. Turn it over and lay it down so that I can show you. Okay. Uh, mm, kind of okay. That's very close. That's very close up. Okay, it could be worse. This is the gap I was on about. Um, yeah, so let me stop that from bleeping, hang on a second. Okay. Yeah, who's texting me? Let's have a quick look. Shouldn't do this while I'm recording, really, should I? Oh, it's only the bank to tell, them I, to tell me I owe them money. <laughs> As always. Yeah, the gap at the back. 
that's a bit big but that'll be under the gunnels up to about here is under the gunnels I think uh, that bit's not too bad I could probably fill that with a bit of glue and um, the, the dust on the floor that'll probably fill most of that and then once you sand it down flush and smooth and flat it will it will it will show it will disappear almost you'll still see the line obviously you'll never hide the line but yeah that's okay I'm not too bad with that um, right I'm gonna put the counter back up over there um, and then I'm gonna start measuring up for, for fitting the cocker again so right stay where you are Okay, you saw a fair bit of it. So that has now been turned to 90 degrees. Plenty of space there now at the back. I mean, at the back here, I can put, I don't know, spice jars, whatever, you know, I can put stuff behind there, all that sort of, you know, bits of junk. And um, got the join here, look. Just put a bit of glue in it. You still see it at the moment because the glue is still dark. Once it dries completely, it should go clear. And as you can see, inlaid. So it's when it's screwed in, 
it's just sitting on um, a layer of uh, butyl tape at the minute which is connected to the bottom of the, uh, the cooker so when I screw that down that will be as good as flush if not flush it won't be far off so just need to clean the corners up just see in there, I need to tidy up especially this corner, this one's a bit dirty and uh, I did a boo boo so I need to try and fill that uh, which is not an issue, I'll get a bit of uh, bit of glue and I'll mix up some um, sand, some dirt in it, you know dust um, sanding dust and I'll use that as, as a filler it's a bit of a big hole for that but it'll do, it'll do the job so there you go. I mean, this isn't screwed in yet, obviously, because I still need to treat the um, um, the work surface. So that's the uh, excuse the mess, full of junk. It's full of shavings and stuff. But there you go. That wasn't too bad. Um, not massively happy with the joint in the uh, in the worktop, but we'll see what it's like when it's when it's um, when it's dried. Like you know, you can just see the joint there. Look. Got biscuits in the middle look. Yeah. Okay. I'm uh, I'm rather happy with that. I think that um, now I've got my head round the idea. And uh, Duncan, um, one of the pre previous users of the boat, uh, suggested I inlay it and make it look better, make it look neater. And. Uh, it definitely does. In laying it definitely makes it look neater. Okay, that's it. I'm done for the day. Well, thanks for watching. Um, I do really appreciate uh, you tuning in and giving me advice and all that sort of stuff. Um, cookers, pretty much done. And I, I am actually happy with it. Um, it looks a lot better than I, I thought it would. So I'm, I'm very happy with this and my OCD is appeased. A uh, couple of jobs still to do on the cooker. Um, need to think about uh, coating this now get it once I've filled the holes the few little holes I've got and sanding it I need to think about coating it with um, uh, I don't know works up a work top preservative or something of the same um, bit of varnish or a bit of oil or something like that I did get some oil from B&Q which is kind of like the same as Lowe's I suppose um, it's uh, antibacterial anti some antifungal antibacterial uh, water repellent uh, and it's designed specifically for worktops so that should look good and apparently it doesn't darken or change the worktop it's just um, a light oil apparently so I'm looking forward to trying that uh, and I'll oil all in the gaps here all between the sink they'll all get oiled and you know all that sort of stuff um, so that's gonna be it for this week um, as I say I didn't get round to finishing the oven uh, the box of the oven because I'm waiting for a couple of boards to be delivered the, the same colour as the, the worktops, the work units, uh, the doors and the, and the uh, drawers. So once they're delivered and I can get it built properly, that'll look great, um, hopefully. So that's it for them. Um, I've had a, a, couple, a rough couple of weeks, shall we say, but it, we get there in the end. We, um, it don't seem to look too bad, actually. I'd have, I'd have still preferred it to be one complete board, but um, we're going to see what it looks like when it dries. Um, I think it'll be okay. I can't see it being an issue. You'll probably still see a slight line there. You'll know there's a join, but that doesn't matter. Um, I am still fancying putting um, a black glass splashback at the back here still um, against the wall. So that may still um, happen. So, okay. If you've enjoyed the video, then um, please give me a thumbs up. Um, don't forget to comment down below. I always um, read your comments. I love your comments um, Good or bad criticizing or not. I don't care. I love them um, With this cooker issue it's the comments that you guys have given me that have seen me through uh, and sorted me out and um, I do really appreciate it um, So yeah comments are great. Also, if you're not subscribed then um, please consider it. I would love to have you along um, there's a nice little community on uh, on the Precious Jet channel, um, and we do tend to chat a lot uh, in the uh, comments. So uh, it'd be great to have you around. And that's it. Um, as you've probably noticed, I said in the last video, there's no adverts for a while um, until I can get something sorted out. I may not even bring adverts back. I'm not a keen advert fan when I watch videos myself. 
So adver adverts may be um, a thing of the past for this channel. Um, so on that point, um, if you do fancy helping me out, then there are links in the uh, in the description below. Um, you can follow me on, uh, sorry, you can support me on Patreon. Uh, you can also send me a one-off couple of quid um, through PayPal and also there's a, a link there to my wish list on Amazon if you'd like to buy me a present. Um, if you do go on the Amazon list uh, and buy something then just drop a comment somewhere so I can see it so just to say hi I've sent you I've sent you a little present just so I know to expect it more than anything else because if it doesn't show up and I don't know it's coming then it'll just disappear in Amazon. Um, if I know it's coming then I can chase them and say oh where's this? So, okay, hope you have a great week or hope you've had a great weekend or you're about to have a great weekend uh, and hope you have a great week. Um, don't forget, don't work too hard. There's always stuff out there I'm sure you can do to, um, to make your life more pleasant. Okay, mine, I'll come to the boat. Sometimes it's stressful, sometimes it's not, but I really enjoy coming to the boat. So guys, I uh, hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you on the next video. Okay, see you, bye.